Welcome to Rail's very first AgriTech Talk, a monthly appointment to inspire us all to think tech when designing and implementing our projects and programs in less than 20 minutes a month. Each first Tuesday of the month, we'll invite guest speakers from inside and outside the organization to tell us about successes, challenges, solutions, and experiences trying to advance the digitalization of agriculture. My name is Daniela Di Gian Antonio, and I am the team leader for digital agriculture and today's host. Today's special guest is Dika Zariste, Information Technology Officer from the FAO Agroinformatics Division of HQ, CSI, and he will tell us about the FAO Digital Services Portfolio, or the DSP, a FAO mobile app that can be utilized to deliver information and advisory services to farmers. Diga, welcome. Thank you, Daniela. Thank you. Pleasure to be here. Pleasure is all ours. And I have four questions for you. We will now launch a timer and uh, we will need to get these questions, these questions answered before the timer ends. No and pressure. If, no pressure at all, <laughs> right? <laughs> but also in the last minutes, we will take a few questions from the audience. So let me ask everybody to write down their questions and comments in the chat, which will be monitored by my colleague, Veronica. So, Timer, timer will start running now. Are you ready? Yes, let's do Yay, it. Yay, let's do it. So very first question for you, Dika. Can you tell us about the DSP? What is this and how everything started? Well, in few words, um, the DSP uh, is our mobile app that originated as part of the project in 2017 um, in um, pilot districts in Rwanda and Senegal. And uh, since it grew and uh, now we have the whole toolkit uh, encompassing application and tools. And essentially it's like you said, it's a app to for the advisory services to deliver information to the farmers. And actually since then, now we are live in six countries, Senegal, Rwanda, Tanzania, Jordan, Egypt, and Iraq. And there are a few projects ongoing uh, this year into next year. Okay, so very interesting. So this um, sounds like a vehicle, an empty box, delivering information and advisory, which started in two countries, Rwanda and Senegal, and since then expanded many others. So Diga, perhaps the best thing to really understand what is this app is to see it. Can you show us around? Wow. Well. With pleasure. It's a pressure to do, to show everything. So when you log in into the application, this is a global version, the one we use for demonstrations. By default, it comes with the four themes, weather and crop calendar, livestock, agri-marketplace, in Nutrifood. And originated with this, and the idea was to deliver information on the crop production and animal, uh, crop and animal production and all the processes surrounding that. So weather and crop calendar shows, um, first it's a weather forecast we get from the Met Norway based on the GPS of the user. Obviously I'm in Rome. The advice, it's used to insert the messages uh, which are important in season as a warnings or, and those are the messages also that can be broadcast to the farmers, registered farmers. As you can see, we enter the messages as a text messages, which can be supported by audio message as well. And now it's the capability has been extended to be supported by video and image. Uh, we here are connected to the another um, file product, crop calendar. And here we have information for the countries that have entered based on the agricultural zones. And uh, here for each agricultural zones, countries indicate which uh, crops are important. And then we enter, they, they have the information. So the basic, the sort of a crop calendar um, for the period for the country and uh, for that pro, pro crop. Then you have some general information about the crop itself, which can be obviously extended. And then advices uh, in, again in a similar form as before. Here you can also notice that we can indicate who is providing the uh, information. 
So this one in particular comes from the Ministry of Agriculture. So uh, accordingly, their logo shows up there. So <clears throat> then we have a livestock, which is sort of built similarly. We have here the advice on the production. So for first, it's a um, species, and then you have breeds. So, and then we can, again, group the messages by uh, uh, either animal health, animal production, or, but in a country, they can do whatever they want to. In addition, we have information here about the diseases, treatments, and uh, more information is entered by the country specialists in live countries. And then we have here vaccination. We cannot see right now anything, but because there is no information for Italy, but in the live countries here, you see the vaccination calendars, um, sometimes even prices, et cetera. Uh, next one is agri-marketplace. And obviously it speaks for itself. Um, it's, this by default is connected to another, um, uh, what do you call it, uh, foul product. Uh, here we have uh, Tajikistan, and this is a FPMA, Food Price Monitoring Application. And information is organized in commodities and markets, and you can view a commodity in different markets, or you can view the commodities available in the market. I have to toggle back and forth because this is sort of a um, global uh, instance uh, of the application and uh, but in a country this would be just a, just an information about the country so like you, I said you can see the markets and then for each market you can see whatever commodities prices are available okay and the last one is in NutriFood and this team is dedicated to providing advice on harvest to post harvest practices and um, practices uh, and processes to maintain the nutritional value of the product, to deliver high quality products to the um, customers, as well as some maybe tips about how to um, create the value added production. So this is a tool and we, modified many things to make it easier to manage the information in a tool. And for that, we build a uh, toolkit, which I'm showing you here, the instance of Tanzania. It's an interesting one because they used the default themes, but also with, with the, our tools now, they can add additional themes on the fly. You can see here aquaculture, which is important for, um, for um, Tanzania. So here, everything is organized the similar way, the way you see it in the application. And then on the bottom of the structure, you have messages and you just can add any message. I'm playing here and obviously this is a development instance. And once you publish, it becomes available in the application. We support the multilingual uh, application. So here you manage the application in English, and then you can do the same in Swahili. Also, we use the auto translation services. We provided, it's a Google based uh, application. So we use the Google services. And here we can automatically translate what we have entered. And that gives the users a base for, uh, sort of starting base, and then they can update the information if needed. Um, this is a capability, we call it a theme factory, to create the new themes, just like aquaculture, and we provide some examples how to structure to go forward to help users to manage the content. Yes, I'll stop sure, I'll stop here, and um, um, yes. Thanks a lot, Biga. So if I understand correctly, the mobile app is for the farmers and come by default with information on weather forecasts on crop calendars, if available in the FIO crop calendar tool. Market prices, again, can integrate with FEMA if they are available. But then uh, the content provider, let's say, 
could make available any sort of information and advisory services by creating new teams by using the tool that you just showed us. Well, this is That's very correct. interesting. So a very simple, simple tool that could be deployed even, even immediately and then make it custom for the country. So then let me ask you, because you showed us the name of an organization there that was providing the content in, in Tanzania, but then, so who creates the content? Who develops the content? Who updates the content? And who eventually will own this mobile app? And what about farmers? Is it free for them to download it? So I'll start with the ownership. Um... Uh, we manage the technology and we sort of own the technology, the app itself, um, thus taking burden of uh, technological adventure and creating the app. And we give it, uh, make, make it available to the countries, interested countries, together with the country offices. And then they become custodians of the content. So they are in charge. So far, we had different partners for the content management. It's somewhere between Ministry of Agriculture, research centers in Jordan, and uh, some extension services, for instance, in Senegal. Um, we're looking into new uh, private partnerships. There is a small project coming up in Kazakhstan, uh, working with the union. We'll see how that goes, uh, with the union of private uh, organizations. And as far as farmers goes, uh, once the application is deployed, there is a local version in a country, in a Google Play Store of the country, it's open, uh, it's available free of charge to the uh, farmers and we don't even register them really, no privacy issues, etc. Thank okay. you. So we could even think of different delivery models. While so far, if I understood correctly, it has been the ministries of agriculture supported by the country office, having to manage you know, the, the advisory that are being sent through the app, we could actually consider other delivery models, such as you just told us about the example of Kazakhstan, where perhaps you will work, you will um, uh, deploy the application through the dairy union of Kazakhstan farmers so that they can send advisory services to their farmers. Terrific. Then let me ask you a more practical question, because I'm sure many of the people that are following us today are uh, would like to ask this question. So let's imagine that somebody here would like to introduce the app through a project in their country. How much would it cost? And what should be the key steps to get started? We have less than a minute. So um, to introduce um, the utilizing it in an existing project is best because there are existing beneficiaries and it's easier to sort of promote it. Um, our services to help and support the full project cycle is if by default around 20,000. If there are any special technical issues, we, there, will be, there might be a need for a little bit more. The starting point is to, first of all, to identify that there is a need together with the local stakeholders, with the local authorities, the whole sort of uh, group of custodians in the country, identify motiv motivated stakeholders and people who will be um, organizations that are motivated to maintain, to create and maintain the content for the application. So um, once that's done, it can be part of the project cycle and um, it takes around two, three months to introduce. And obviously then it has to be maintained and updated and enriched with the content. I see. So it could be done with relatively uh, little resources. Um, yes. <laughs> The, the biggest resources are people in the country, the technical people, resources. Of course. Uh, financially, yes. Diga, time is over for my questions, but now let's go take a couple of questions from the audience. Veronica, you have been monitoring the chat. What are what are our colleagues curious about? Uh, thank you, Daniela. Diga, so we have a couple of questions. Uh, for instance, Katrina is interested to know, uh, is it possible to collect feedback from the users through the app other opportunities to interact with the farmers, for instance, through the polls or collect results, insights, and their feedback. Um, another question uh, from Eugen is, um, uh, he's curious to know if it's possible to add new functionalities such as benchmarking. Um, and perhaps another question from Murod um, in terms of extension services. Um, 
do you consider adding real-time and tailored advisory services in real time by agricultural consultants? I'll share my screen for the first. Um, actually, you know what? I'll skip the whole sharing. I forgot to, to, to show, but on the application, there is a on the right, there is a blue button feedback. And we, um, from anywhere in the application, farmers can submit the feedback either anonymously or identify themselves if they want to get back some answers, right? Um, about, uh, um, sorry, I. So feedback, yes. Uh, then there were the 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 early warnings, basically the real time notifications. The real time notification. Any any uh, message in the application can be broadcast, or we can add a new message uh, from the toolkit, and it can be broadcasted instantly uh, as a notification, basically WhatsApp message. Um, and um, right, because, because I, I tried the app and uh, users can really receive a push notification right yes, so can really receive, can really be used as early warning too absolutely and yes. then the third question was can we add new features um we can uh, depends like i said when you say feature it depends if it's just a theme which is uh, concentrated around particular content say financial education or uh, anything else you can create the structures on the fly, like aquaculture in Tanzania, and populate the information. If it's something connected to other tools or something else, you will need our engagement and we will help you out, obviously. But um, um, I mean, uh, a lot of, a, a, there are a lot of possibilities. And unfortunately, this is a type of question that we need some more time to answer. And in the interest of time, maybe through you, Daniela, and your team, we can have a discussion with the interested parties. Exactly. Hope I, answered, um, I, I hope I answered questions. Thanks a lot. Yeah. So I can see this sparked a lot of interest from our colleagues, and I can see there are still questions that haven't been answered. But let's do something. Let's save them so that Diga can, can get you an answer in writing. Thank you very much, Diga. It was a pleasure to have you here today to learn about the DSP. And Veronica, please put a link in the chat so that anybody can browse the app by themselves so they can see around.